Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching me as I explore the wide world of pens. And yes, we have another pen being held up, this time by a crab on a turntable. And again, I do this because I think it's a great looking pen. You may say, oh, you've just done a wooden pen recently, and I say yes, and this is another wooden pen from China, the Jinhao 9056. And we're going to look at it and see if it's something that is good and worthy of being included with my other wood pens. I had to change the battery, so there may be a little bit of a skip in the video. This is a heavily grained wood, which is the kind that I generally like. We're going to just zoom in a little bit closer so we can appreciate that grain and that really nice design clip. Let's look at the pen a little bit more closely as Mr. Crab gives us a wink. Here's the protective cellophane wrapper that the pen was in. And this was just inside of a padded envelope. We'll give you the translations. It's, I think it's appropriate. I also think it's 9057, which might be the number for this uh, wood version of the 9056. And it was pretty much produced uh, a little uh, less than a month ago. Nice. The first impression of this pen is it's a substantial pen both in its size, in its weight, how it feels in the hand, it just has that feel to it. I don't own a 149 or M1000, but I do think that this would fit into that size category. As Milo comes in to remind me that I need to do something. There's a few nice, unique little features on this pen. One is the clip is spring-loaded and you can open it up by pressing the back of the clip. For, for those that really like to put their pens in their shirt pockets, this should work very, very well. And once it's in place, it's going to stay in place. The other thing that Jin Hao did is they put an engraving here in the back of the cap, which is interesting. There's your logo, Jin Hao Pen. And then it says Heritage, which is interesting that they chose that name for this pen. It's done fairly nicely, but I really do think the star of this pen is the wood, and this wood grain, and this tiger grain. The cap comes off in about one and a quarter turns to reveal a nice number six Jin Hao nib. A little bit more refined design, just a small, well not a small, but an F there for fine. No referencing to the gold plating, which is good. The standard uh, injection molded feed, which works well. But that's a substantial section. Nice block threads. You don't feel that step up. The pen fits in the hand pretty much next to perfect from my perspective. It feels good. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. Um, you can hold it anywhere. Uh, it's just, they did a good job. And based on what you would think from the design, the cap does post. And as we'll see later on, uh, posting is not a problem the way they've designed it. It does add weight to the pen, and it slightly back weights it, but I could use this pen posted without any difficulties whatsoever. So we're going to do some comparisons to other wood pens, one I recently got, the Hong Dion. And then we're going to find an ink for this pen, ink it up, and see how that fine Jin Hao nib performs. So we're now going to explore the Jin Hao 9056 in the Tiger Sandalwood finish. We're going to LED investigate the cap. But 
there's a hint about what we're going to find. The barrel's also, again, nicely done. You got that metal insert, which ties into the metal here at the top of the section. A very nice uh, extension there to keep the converter nice and secure. And just your classic Jin Hao injection molded feed with lots of fins, lots of channels. And that fits on the end of this nib collar. You know, this is a low-end converter from my perspective. You know, there's no band, there's no special insert. This, I think, is just pressed on. It's not threaded, so taking it apart takes a little bit of effort on your part. And then we see the number six Jin Hao two-tone nib with a little bit of rhodium plating there in that uh, filigree border and it is a uh, fine and it has the logo now we have some muted sunlight good for the led exploration i really like that tiger wood grain kind of reminds me of certain uh, ebonite designs this has a real substantial feel to it this cap and we see a full plastic liner in there, similar to what we found on the Hong Dion. And that's a very nicely done clip. And as you can see, you can press on the back, as they showed in the auction. The barrel is similarly done. Nice substantial feel to it. That metal insert, so you get metal on metal threads, and you can see that wood that's been machined to accommodate the pen. I'm impressed. I enjoy little details. So there's an O-ring there at the bottom of that nib assembly. So what that does is, is when you screw the nib assembly back into the section, that seals it tight. So if you didn't have that O-ring there, in theory you could get some ink that goes in there during filling and that could possibly leak out could get ink on your fingers you know ink going on to the nib where you don't expect it and the other nice feature is that little o-ring there so when you reattach the barrel and screw it down you get that final little turn that seats against this o-ring has a nice feel to it and also secures that barrel it's not going to accidentally unscrew good little details that I enjoy well it's obvious what pens to compare the Jin Hao to so we have the Hung Dion 660 and we have the Moon Man M6 this is by far the biggest pen of these three both in length and girth and weight all of the physical attributes let you know it's a big pen. I think the wood is good. You'll notice this is a little bit more of a matte finish. These two I've put on that beeswax and mineral oil coating, and I will put it on the Jin Hao too, but I just wanted to show it in the as-received condition. we got a nice red wood. These two both are in the Tiger Wood family, but this one looks like it's a lighter version of it. But the cap is more similar in color to the Jin Hao. Let's uncap them and look at the business end. So here they are posted, and the Jin Hao again dominates this group of pens for its size. The section is massive. Really good size nib. I mean, they're all number six nibs and they're all gold tone, two tone. Each of these three pens have their own intrinsic design attributes, which I think are very aesthetically pleasing, at least pleasing to my eye. And I do like wood, I do like metal, and I do like plastic. I do like all types of materials that pens are made of, especially if they produce 
a writing instrument that I enjoy using. So let's just zoom in real quick on that section and nib to see some other common traits. These all have uh, three different styles of sections to them. This is your conical section. Again, conical section, but a flare out at the end of the nice metal band. And here again, a conical section that really doesn't flare out very much, but there is that metal band at the end. All these three nibs are nice, both aesthetically and functionally. They do all write well. The caps all come off with a minimal amount of turns, which is nice. I think we need to just go down a little bit and look more closely at the wood. They're just really nice pens. Pens that I'm glad that I was able to acquire. And hopefully you can appreciate that nice wood grain. So the Jinhao 9056 screamed out to be compared to the 159. And it does come close. It's not quite as long. It's not quite as girthy. But ergonomically, I think it's a better pen for most people. The 159 might be a little large, and if it's a little large, the 9056 would probably be more in your sweet spot. Let's take off the cap and look at the section and nib. Uncapped, they're pretty much the same length. It might give a hair advantage to the 9056, so that would work well. Section-wise, the 9056 is slightly girthier than the 159. It's the same number 6 uh, Jin Hao nib, but this is a more upscale version of it. Two-tone, single-tone. It has that ubiquitous uh, KGP on it. But it has that same kind of like scroll work design. You have that same little metal ring at the bottom of the section. You have nice kind of block metal threads. A metal inside the barrel that screws against the metal threads on the section. Let's look at that a little more closely. This is a really an evolutionary change for Jin Hao from my perspective. So they kept a lot of the similar engineering and design attributes that they've been making for years in the 159 and they've upgraded them a little bit and put them into the 9056 and they made the material wood instead of uh, injection molded plastic. But overall, nice pens, nice nibs. You couldn't go wrong with either of them, and you have a lot of color choices on the 159. Here's just one example. And you can get the 159 for around five US dollars delivered. You gotta look around. There's a lot of variations in the pricing on the 159. So depending upon what color you want and what seller you buy from, you could vary a few dollars in the price, so search around. It's a buyer's market. So my recent focus is to revisit inks that I have not used in a while. And I don't count how many bottles I have, but I'm certain it's well north of 100. So this called out to me. It is definitely in the Brown family. And I do have quite a bit of this left, even though this bottle is probably a number of years old. And they don't sell this, I don't think, anymore in that size. You can buy smaller bottles occasionally when you find them. The color card shows brown. And no real sheen to it. But it's a nice brown color. The chromatography shows no water resistance. We see some yellow going into orange, going into a very, very dark brown. You might think we could get some shading out of this ink, but we'll see as I write whether that's going to be the case or not. Maybe something I might, you put a little of this on Tomo River paper, which would emphasize the shading if that is a characteristic of this ink. So I've spent some time with the pen, and I do like it. They've done an excellent job with the design. We saw as we compared it to the 159 that it is a large pen. And I think they've done some minor improvements over the 159 design. I like this wood material. You know, that cap comes off with about one and a quarter turns as we showed before. 
will give you those section dimensions because I think that's a good size for me. I like a larger section. And you can move your fingers around wherever you want. You know, it has that nice plastic finish to it, which to me just gives you enough friction against your fingers to make it work well. And I would definitely use this unposted, but it, you can post it. We'll give you the dimensions. And we'll also give you the weight, because I think this is a near-perfect weight, very good balance in the hand. So ergonomically, I'm very, very happy with the pen. Let's see how that fine Jin Hao nib works with that cinnamon brown ink. So overall is a fine steel Chinese Jin Hao nib. I think it's okay. I'm not a fine nib person and this is fine verging on extra fine from my viewpoint. It's smooth. There's a slight bit of feedback but not much. You know after that last pen uh, I'm ready for something that doesn't have that much feedback. For a fine nib, it works and puts down a fair amount of ink, so that's all good. This is stiff as a nail, which is kind of typical of this nib. You can squeeze out a little bit of ink, but not something you're going to do on a regular basis. And yes, it does put out more ink when you put a little pressure on it. When I was comparing the two wooden pens, the 660 with the 9560, both of these are labeled as fine nibs, but they certainly don't write the same at all. This is a medium bordering on broad, and this is a fine bordering on extra fine in my view. I think the Sailor ink in the Wing Sung is a little bit of a wetter ink. It has a little bit... Um, of a higher flow than the Sitsung Krishnat cinnamon brown that I put in the 9560, but this is a bigger difference than I would normally expect from two nibs labeled F for fine. So I'd mentioned using the cinnamon brown ink on Toma River paper. So this is an example of it. And I don't see any more shading than we got from the Fabriano paper, which is more absorbent and generally, Tom River paper shows off shading with a shading ink, so this probably doesn't fall into that shading ink category. I think it's time to rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.1. I gave it one check for the wood design because I think they did an excellent job on the design. It doesn't get a check for the nib because that's nothing special about the nib. It's not good, not bad. It's just what it is. And I just give it one check for the way it feels in the hand, the ergonomics. So to me, that's what really makes this pen special. So if you love wood and you want a bigger size pen, this is about the biggest wooden pen, I think, uh, around. It's certainly in the ballpark of big wood pens. And all the little design elements, all the little features that they have on this pen just are great and they work well. The main Chinese pen manufacturers seem to be upping their game, leapfrogging each other. And that's nice. I mean, uh, as us pen lovers, just gives us more choices than we need, but I'd rather have more choices than less. So that's what makes my day. So we reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. You know, it starts up right away. I don't expect this to dry out at all. It seems to seal pretty well. So hopefully you can find a pen you enjoy to write with. Find a use for all that ink you have. Put it on paper. 
You know, it's interesting what you can do when you put ink in a pen and then put that pen on paper. I hope all of you are safe, healthy, and happy, and enjoying your pens. This is the end of this video. And we're going to say bye until the next video. Yeah, I like the ink.